I revisited my coin-operated money box design this week, hoping to make it more reliable and maybe sell one or two and start adding different designs too. Now I made this one a few years ago now and it was pretty good, but sometimes the coin got jammed in the mechanism. But then I remembered that nowadays I have a 3D printer, so perhaps I could make some key components with that instead of using only plywood. Maybe. Now this is my interpretation of our horse Henry, cut into parts that move independently. When you push down on a lever, he's supposed to rear up spectacularly which wouldn't be that difficult to do, in fact, if you cut all the parts out on a laser cutter, which I can do. But I wanted to give it to Sandra to help her fundraising efforts, you know, for working with the children here on the farm with the animals. So I made it so that Henry would only rear up when a coin was put into a slot. And that part, the money box part, was much more complicated than I thought basically there's two steps to the challenge first the coin must release the lock on the lever somehow and then for this i made a tipping bucket mechanism that uses the weight of the coin to tip the bucket out of the way of the lever and the second step of the challenge was much harder how to remove the coin from the bucket and reset the mechanism. So I came up with a swinging arm thingy that sits inside the tipping bucket. The main lever pushes down on one end of that and the other end pushes the coin out of its position. But <laughs> you would not believe how many attempts it took to get that to work. Whatever you guess, it won't be enough. <laughs> anyway, that was working, but it was the thing that was giving me the most trouble. So I drew a 3D version of it on Tinkercad. This is the seventh attempt. Tinkercad is a free online program and it is amazing. Of course, there are lots of other programs that are even more amazing probably, but this one does all I want so far. A four millimeter nut helps return it to its ready position. So the weight of the coin tips the bucket out of the way of the lever and the coin itself is tipped out of the bucket by the new printed lever thingy. I also printed a coin slot to help deliver the coin more accurately into the bucket. Surprisingly important. Okay, so then I tweaked the design of the main coin box a bit and made another couple of them. Mine's an old CO2 laser. I think the latest diode ones are are neater and quieter and much cheaper. Marvellous machines, however they work. Now I'm using one and a half millimeter plywood for this and the pieces just slot together. Now I made this coin box so the lever is weighted and wants to reset itself. And there's a hole in the back to get your money out. Again, very important. And it worked perfectly most of the time. <laughs> but the small amount of twist in the bucket sometimes jammed the lever. The bucket has to be very loosely held so even a small coin can activate it. But that means it could 
sort of twist sideways. So I ended up having to remake the bottom of that a little bit so it's wider. Anyway, anyway, eventually when all that was working satisfactorily, I had another look at Henry the horse. Now I am quite happy with his shape and his action, so I just made him bigger this time and refined some details. The pieces are held together with glue and kebab sticks. Drawing the holes into the design in the first place mean that they all line up properly, um, but it's still quite fiddly. There is one clever part that's hidden within the body that stretches the neck out as the body rises. Apart from that, all the moving joints are just simple pins and the weight of the parts bring it back into the original resting position. No springs or elastic bands or anything. Which is why the head is quite big and the front hoof is big too. Although the real Henry has big feet too, huge feet. The rider just sits loosely on top, but she needs some weighted boots to keep her in the saddle and well balanced. Anyway, after a few days and many cups of tea and many, many versions and a new label, here's Henry doing his thing. Gee up, dear Henry, stop eating hay. They found us some money. So up, up and away. Now, of course, the money box part of this should work for other figures too, shouldn't it? Yes, Tim. Although there's just a simple lever that moves less than two inches, and that's all it does, still, that should be enough to operate other little figures, not just a rearing horse. Yeah, it would be nice to make different mechanical devices sometime using cranks and gears and exciting things like that but for now this single simple lever has kept me challenged enough i promise anyway so i had to go at another model completely different this time the figure just has to stand there and only her arms go up as the lever goes down I made another identical money box with only the top different. Well, it's almost the same. It just has holes in different places and the figure just fits into those holes. Now I just want the arms to go straight up from the shoulders. <laughs> but that's not as simple as it sounds. Many versions of shoulders are made, each a little different from the one before. Now, I probably could have done this with plywood pieces, but I think the printed version is much more reliable and simpler. I experimented with different positions for the arm to be attached and for the string to pull from. Because, of course, the string has to pull the arms up, but then stop pulling or else something will break. 
and the distance the string travels depends where on the main lever it is attached. But anyway, once I was happy with that, I gave her a dress. And again, many versions of dress were tried, cut out on the laser machine as well. I went through the charity shops looking for thin cotton with small patterns. And I backed the material with iron on hemming tape to stop it from fraying. Now, I never used iron on hemming tape before, but the nice lady in the charity shop told me all about it. And now I'm a convert. See, the plywood shape of the woman is the same as a drawing that I made of her. So I had that drawing printed off at exactly the same size. Thanks to Gareth for getting that right. And then I glued them together. Supposed to be a young woman with a big smile. I just painted it on the computer. So it's very cartoony, but that's okay. I found the best way to line up the paper is just to hold it up against the light so you can see through. After I trimmed the paper, I covered up the white edges with black felt tip pen. And attached the label. Put a euro in the cup and then I'll try to cheer you up. Now, don't watch the next bit if you're easily offended. It's just a silly bit of fun, okay? And I hope it offends no one, surely. Whee! All right then, so now I have two models and a pretty good design for the money box base and many ideas for more variations and most of them aren't rude at all. But sadly, I've realized that I can't sell these things. They just take too long to make. Not counting all the weeks of designing and prototyping and the materials that went into them. If I only count the time it takes to put one together, probably two hours each, then that's already about 30 euro at minimum wage. Then I ought to add something for the machines that I use and we'll have to replace one day and for the materials and for the packaging. So say another 10 euro minimum. So that's 40. Now any craft shop or gallery, I took these two, they might like them and they might like to display them, but they put on at least 50%, often more. So we're up to 60 euro at least. And no one is going to pay 60 euro for a money box, are they? When you can probably get one for a fiver on AliExpress. Not the same, but equally good at collecting coins. And sending these in the post would be prohibitively expensive, I'm sure. So I am a little disappointed. I had hoped with my marvelous machines it would be possible to make something quick enough to sell. But unless you have any better ideas then my automata adventure has already ended. Shame really. By the way, I never actually earn minimum wage, okay? <laughs> I think my garlic will pay me about 50 cent an hour tops this year. I'm just hoping I can charge more for it next year. I would be miserable, except now I have something to cheer me up. <laughs>